Legend has it. This is where giants come to seal the deal. Here I am, they roar. But theirs are not the only roars here. In this place where carbon fiber beasts rip round you at 300 kilometers an hour, where the tension before lights out makes the hardened flutter and the mighty gasp, this is where a handshake can warp the course of history, where what's written on a napkin can send shockwaves. Below is where the F1 elite soldier from truck to track. Into battle they go, into battle you go. A place where you'll be at the beating heart of it all. Where time is on your side. And the sun sets three times. One, two, three. This is Paddock Club. Isn't it time you wrote your legend? Legend has it, this is where giants come to seal the deal. Here I am, they roar. But theirs are not the only roars here. In this place where carbon fiber beasts rip round you at 300 kilometers an hour, where the tension before lights out makes the hardened flutter and the mighty gasp, this is where a handshake can warp the course of history, where what's written on a napkin can send shockwaves. Below is where the F1 elite soldier from truck to track. Into battle they go, into battle you go. A place where you'll be at the beating heart of it all. Where time is on your side. And the sun sets three times. One, two, three. This is Paddock Club. Isn't it time you wrote your legend?
Legend has it, this is where giants come to seal the deal. Here I am, they roar. But theirs are not the only roars here. In this place where carbon fiber beasts rip round you at 300 kilometers an hour, where the tension before lights out makes the hardened flutter and the mighty gasp, this is where a handshake can warp the course of history, where what's written on a napkin can send shockwaves. Below is where the F1 elite soldier from truck to track. Into battle they go, into battle you go. A place where you'll be at the beating heart of it all. Where time is on your side. And the sun sets three times. One, two, three. This is Paddock Club. Isn't it time you wrote your legend? Legend has it, this is where giants come to seal the deal. Here I am, they roar. But theirs are not the only roars here. In this place where carbon fiber beasts rip round you at 300 kilometers an hour, where the tension before lights out makes the hardened flutter and the mighty gasp, this is where a handshake can warp the course of history, where what's written on a napkin can send shockwaves. Below is where the F1 elite soldier from truck to track. Into battle they go, into battle you go. A place where you'll be at the beating heart of it all. Where time is on your side. And the sun sets three times. One, two, three. This is Paddock Club. Isn't it time you wrote your legend?
Legend has it, this is where giants come to seal the deal. Here I am, they roar. But theirs are not the only roars here. In this place where carbon fiber beasts rip round you at 300 kilometers an hour, where the tension before lights out makes the hardened flutter and the mighty gasp, this is where a handshake can warp the course of history, where what's written on a napkin can send shockwaves. Below is where the F1 elite soldier from truck to track. Into battle they go, into battle you go. A place where you'll be at the beating heart of it all. Where time is on your side. And the sun sets three times. One, two, three. This is Paddock Club. Isn't it time you wrote your legend? Legend has it, this is where giants come to seal the deal. Here I am, they roar. But theirs are not the only roars here. In this place where carbon fiber beasts rip round you at 300 kilometers an hour, where the tension before lights out makes the hardened flutter and the mighty gasp, this is where a handshake can warp the course of history, where what's written on a napkin can send shockwaves. Below is where the F1 elite soldier from truck to track. Into battle they go, into battle you go. A place where you'll be at the beating heart of it all. Where time is on your side. And the sun sets three times. One, two, three. This is Paddock Club. Isn't it time you wrote your legend?
Legend has it. This is where giants come to seal the deal. Here I am, they roar. But theirs are not the only roars here. In this place where carbon fiber beasts rip round you at 300 kilometers an hour, where the tension before lights out makes the hardened flutter and the mighty gasp, this is where a handshake can warp the course of history, where what's written on a napkin can send shockwaves. Below is where the F1 elite soldier from truck to track. Into battle they go, into battle you go. A place where you'll be at the beating heart of it all. Where time is on your side. And the sun sets three times. One, two, three. This is Paddock Club. Isn't it time you wrote your legend? Legend has it, this is where giants come to seal the deal. Here I am, they roar. But theirs are not the only roars here. In this place where carbon fiber beasts rip round you at 300 kilometers an hour, where the tension before lights out makes the hardened flutter and the mighty gasp, this is where a handshake can warp the course of history, where what's written on a napkin can send shockwaves. Below is where the F-1 elite soldier from truck to track. Into battle they go, into battle you go. A place where you'll be at the beating heart of it all. Where time is on your side. And the sun sets three times. One, two, three. This is Paddock Club. Isn't it time you wrote your legend? Hello and welcome. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Ian Dobson of JDC Promotions and we are live on Facebook and YouTube for our very first celebrity Q&A talk shop. For more than 20 years, we have been providing exclusive hospitality facilities and official paddock club hospitality at motor racing circuits around the globe. We have a passion for F1 and for delivering exceptional experiences. And we've shared that passion with thousands of our clients. Now, as you can imagine, we've not been able to do too much of that this year. So perhaps you would be kind enough to support us by giving us your likes, shares, follows and subscribes. Uh, to keep up to date with our latest news and offers. Now today we are supporting two wonderful and important charities. We're raising funds for SANS. SANS is the leading stillbirth and neonatal death charity in the UK and we're raising funds for Readly. Readly provides counselling and support to those who have suffered from or have friends or family who have suffered from asbestosis or mesothelioma. Now you'll find in the details above uh, a link to our Just Giving page where you can donate 
um, and if you can, please do, we'd much appreciate it. Now, I'm delighted to inform you that we've been working with Bluebell Vineyard Estates, the home of the range of Hind Leap sparkling wines made right here in the UK. And today, we have 100 bottles to give away to you, the viewers. So stay tuned to find out how you can win. So I guess it's about time we introduced you to our special guest. After leaving the world of Formula One back in 2018, he's since been lured back by Ross Braun. He's here today to talk to us about F1, his new role in F1 and other projects. He's a fan's favourite and all-round super guy. It's my absolute pleasure to introduce you to Mr. Rob Smedley. Hello, Rob. Hi there, Rob. Uh, how are you? Good to see you. Let me just turn your microphone on there one second. Thank you very much for joining us, Rob. How are you? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. Um, thank you very much for having me. Ah, real pleasure. Marvellous. So, um, where are you at the minute? I am in a kart track in Northamptonshire, and yeah. then later on, I'm dropping that for a bigger circuit in Northamptonshire um, for slightly bigger cars. Yeah, slightly so bigger cars. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, Rob, I, the first thing I wanted to ask you, um, I mean, obviously you, uh, you left the world of F1 back in 2018, as I said in my intro, but um, what was it that brought you back? Um, you know, I, it, it, it was a conversation with, with Ross to, to do something different. Um, I was, you know, but by, you know, midway through 2018, I guess, um, with the situation that we had at Williams and with with other things that, that were going on, yeah, um, I kind of just just lost a little bit of the drive to 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 and, and the motivation that you need to to be, be successful in, in in Formula One. Yeah, um, and uh, you know I'd always decided that that you know if if I had if that if that spark had gone, um, it's it's such a crucial um, team sport. Yeah. Oh, we've lost you there, Rob. Oh, that yeah, I really yeah, didn't yeah. want to be. It was it was time for some time off. Um, it was time for some time off. Time for a bit of reflection. Mm. Um, and therefore, that's what that that's the decision that that I took. You know, I didn't want to be in in a in a Grand Prix team if I wasn't given a hundred and ten. Yeah, percent. Um, just want one hundred and ten percent out of everyone that works for me. Um. So yeah, I, I I took a little bit of time off, but then you know after some time back in my most mostly, mostly spent in in the office in in my garden, um, you know, <laughs> I, I consultation with with Ross. Yeah. Um, you know, I saw this as a new challenge. I definitely wanted to do. You know, I want to. It's time time in my life where I want to do things to to give to give back, if you like. Um, and I just felt that that you. Know, you know, going and getting involved with this, the central body Formula One um, that Ross is in charge of, mm. um, give me a chance to do that, to look at, you know, um, the future of the sport, the regulations, the way that we um, perhaps bring sport to the viewer, uh, bring the sport to the viewer to make it more exciting, um, to give more insight, um, you know, new sporting regulations, new governance, new, new technical regulations. Um, all of those things are really exciting and it's kind of like a, you know, a level above where, where I was um, to kind of have that. Oh. I think we might have lost you there, Rob. Let's see so, if we can get... Oh, Rob, are you there? I'm, I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> we just lost you there for a second, Rob. Uh, I think the connection... Or on your end, sort of cut out on you a little bit. All right, where was I? Um, I, I think we missed we missed about the last sort of two minutes of what you just said there, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I, I couldn't tell you exactly where you were because <laughs> you sort of disappeared. But um, I wanted to actually just before we could, we got some fans on the line that. Um, would like to ask a question to you directly today, Rob. But before we go over to those guys, yeah. um, 
I wanted to ask you about, uh, I know that you've been working on a, a new project. Um, obviously, you've taken this job at F1, but you're also working on another project, um, Electroheads, I, I believe it's called. Could you tell us a bit about yeah. that new project? Sorry if there's a lot of background noise. These are clearly not electric um, drive trains. Oh, right, yeah. <laughs> can you hear me okay now? Yeah. Well, yes, we can, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. This is the uh, this is the problem of being in rural Northamptonshire, I guess. Yeah. Um, so Electrohead is uh, Electrohead. Just just tell me if you can hear me. All right, Ian. If not, then uh, I'll keep my thumb up when I can hear you. Okay. <laughs> We're all right. All right. <laughs> Electrohead is is it's it's essentially. I, I think that karting is a you know a great way of, of getting kids involved in in the grassroots of, of motorsport yeah and you know trying to um, trying to you know kind of plant those initial seeds I think it's a brilliant sport to be involved in actively it teaches kids about discipline about yeah. teamwork um, about dealing with disappointment um, you know about yeah. about uh, some some magical moments. And, and I think they're, they're really, really key life lessons um, that you can learn at grassroots in motorsport, you know, and if we then bring kids on to be Formula One fans after that, all well and good. Yeah. Um, the problem with karting is that it is, uh, it's, it's very, very expensive. Um, it's incredibly expensive. Um, it means that the, the demographic that is able to take part in karting is, um, is, is minuscule, is not particularly diverse. Um, which then percolates up to the to the very top of Formula One. Yeah, I mean we get a very singular demographic involved in the driver market in Formula One as well. So what what I was interested in doing was was trying to look at how you broaden that that um, the market, how you lower the costs of of getting kids involved in motorsport. You know, you've got kids involved in the British Championship that that us of karting that are spending a hundred k, eight year old kids. Um, mm. so, so the, the, the costs are just absolutely out of control. Yeah. So I wanted to bring about, I wanted to, to offer something to the market, which is a complete arrive and drive experience. Um, they're racing carts. You get as much practice as the kids are spending a hundred grand for yeah. a significantly lower number. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we, we'll never be down at, at the, um, price of a pair of football boots, but <laughs> if we can go some way to, to democratize in, um, the grassroots of motorsport and getting more kids involved from more normal backgrounds. Um, I think that will be a, it's, it's a huge blow for freedom and it's a step in the right mm. direction. So that's what Electroheads is all about. We just launched, I think, uh, a week or two ago at a car yeah. track um, called Wilton Mill. Um, we had a, we've had a huge amount of response um, from the current market and the new market, which is exactly what we want. Um, you know, a, a lot of uh, coverage in the media and it's something that we want to take onto an international stage as well. So we don't just want to do it here in the UK. I want to do it all around the world. Um, you know, I would love to have backing from the FIA. I would love to have backing from other major partners. Um, and this be the, the grassroots, um, you know, the, 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 the pathway, the stepladder from, from the very bottom, you know, up into single seated cars. And, and if, we, if, we, if we're successful, and I believe yeah. we can be successful, we'll end up with a much more uh, diverse driver cohort. So it's an exciting project. Yeah, so presumably, as well as making it more affordable for kids to become involved in it, it's going to make it put them more on more of an equal footing, presumably, in terms of the racing itself. Would that be right? Yeah, absolutely. Because one of the problems that you've got is that karting, like a lot of mo motorsports, is is driven by budgets. So if you've got enough budget, you can buy all the best equipment and the best engines and, and everything else. Yeah. What I'm doing is is a single make formula. Um, with electric engines, with 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 the electric drivetrains, I can offer complete parity. So it's never about the engine; it's just about, and it's not about the chassis because we all have, we have identical chassis. Um, it's not about how good your team is because you're all part of my team. Yeah. Um, yeah. So so <laughs> basically, it all comes down to the driver. So so it's it's lower cost and it, and it's and and it's more meritocratic as well. It's faster, fairer, um, cheaper, and greener. Awesome. Well, we'll be we'll be watching with uh, with great interest, Rob, for sure. Um, 
Uh, if it's okay with you, Rob, I think we'll move on to um, one of the people that we got on uh, on the line now. Uh, we'll just, I think we'll we'll bring him in. Richard Cooper's got a question for you, so let's just bring Richard in. Uh, should be with us any moment. Here we are. Hello there, Richard. You're live on Facebook and YouTube. You're here with Rob. There we go. We can see you well. He's, uh, he's connecting to his audio. Welcome, Richard. How are you? Morning, I'm very well. How are Excellent. you? Excellent. I'm very well, thank you. You're you're live on air with Rob. So uh, far away. What's your question? Excellent. Um, thank you. Thank you. Uh, great to talk to you, Rob. And thanks for doing this this morning. Uh, my question is very simple. I've been watching um, Formula One for decades, and it just seems that every few years we have these major rule changes that are designed to you know, slow the cars down, get rid of the downforce, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And it seems that literally within you know half a season, the engineers who are incredibly intelligent people find their way around the, the regulations and we're back to the status quo. How sure are you that this time with the new regulations in 2022, it's going to be any different? Good question. Thank you for that question. Um, I mean, look, we can only start to make strides in the right direction. And I think the difference that that we're doing with the 2022 regulations is that we're not just concentrating on a single set of technical regulations. Um, we have a reasonably holistic view on it where we want to concentrate on technical regulations, sports regulations and the governance. Because I think that if you try and attack um, just one single area, um, you know, there's, it's like kind of, it's, it's like the whack-a-mole. Um, you know, if you concentrate just on one of the moles, then then all the others pop up. So, so one of the things that, that we are doing at the minute is we're actively looking right across the board of, of, of Formula One, um, and and that includes so so the sporting regulations, the governance itself, if you like, so the budget caps and the and the and the remuneration of the teams, and how as a business model the teams um, should operate to make it more sustainable, to make it more attractive to um, new manufacturers who want to come in or new private teams that want to come in um, and to make it more sustainable for the teams themselves. And once you have that and you, you we, we get rid of this, this huge imbalance that we have now of, of the haves and the have-nots, then um, undoubtedly um, we will end up with a closer Formula One. So what we've really done and what you've got to take into account with with what we're trying to do with the 2022 regulations is move towards a more balanced formula one so if um mercedes continues to be the best team then mercedes should win you know we, we can never um artificially change the outcome yeah. of, of of what a championship should be and, and and let and let the you know the the second best or the third best team win um that that can never be the 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 objective here it's always got to be uh, the best team winning but we've got to have a better fight we've got to have a closer fight you know um having cars you know having the, the leading car out qualify in all of its rivals by one second and doing that consistently at, at, at track to track um is not helpful for the sport um and and we know that and we all recognize it and i recognize it you know i, I i'm sure that that you know the current dominating teams recognize that i certainly recognized it when i was at ferrari and i was part of a team that dominated um it's certainly good for the team that you're in but it's not good for the sport so so we're trying to to move it back it's not just about how fast the cars are or how much grip they've got or mechanical grip versus aerodynamic grip and all of this um it's about a much more holistic view and as all we can do really is is um hope that we've we've gone in the right direction in in 2022 and i've firmly believe that we have done because this is the first set of technical regulations that have been designed with with such technical expertise if you like you know formula one in, co in collaboration with the fia and the teams um have designed this new generation car in exactly the same way that that the engineers in a team would design the car um so the concept layout and then detailed aerodynamic design in both cfd and wind tunnel um that's the first time that we've been able to come out with with the, with a really concrete black and white set of regulations so you know i think ross braun has said it um on, on quite a few occasions that there's, there's no way that we we should be arrogant enough to think that we've got it right but what we've got to do is we've got to get the ship steered in a certain direction um and hope that we've 
we, you know we've we've made the the correct choices with with sport in technical and and, and governance um, and then it's about it's about building on that you know it's about mm. building on the budget caps it's about building on the on the technical regulations and it's and it's and it's really moving on from there fantastic thank you very much well thank you very much for your question richard and uh, thanks for joining us we'll be in touch uh, after uh, later today uh, thanks again richard um, I'll, I'll move swiftly on to um, our, our next guest. Um, we have Bev Watson on the live. She's got a, a question for you, Rob. So let's just bring Bev in now. Uh, she should be should be with us any minute. Here we are. Here's Bev. Ah, hello there. She's just joining audio. Hello there, Bev. Thank you very much hello. for joining us. You're live on uh, Facebook and YouTube. Uh, Rob's in the room with us here. I understand you've got Hi, a question Rob. from Rob, so fire away. How are you doing? You okay? Yeah, I'm very well, thank you. That's not my question, by the way. <laughs> um, my question to you is, if you could be a race engineer in any uh, era of F1, which one would it be and why? That's a good question. I like that one. <laughs> a lot of thought went into that. You don't know. <laughs> Uh, definitely not, uh, pre-1970, <laughs> 1980s, definitely not then, um, because of the, uh, death rate of drivers. Mm. Um, you know, I've, uh, been involved, uh, you know, with some fairly, with major incidents, let's say, um, during my time in Formula One, um, lost um, not just in Formula One as well, but outside of Formula One, you know, lost some friends um, who've you know been driving cars, um, and so you know, I, I, it's, it's, it's one hundred percent. This is a better era. Than, than any other era um, in terms of driver safety. So I would never want to be involved in, in a Formula One that was that was dangerous, where, where drivers could lose their lives. Um, but apart from that, I mean, maybe, you know, fatalities were, were still prevalent, but, but slightly lower. Um, maybe the, 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 the late 80s, you know, that, that Senna crossed era um that probably was quite good fun formula one was a little bit less professional than than, than what it is now um and i don't mean that in a in a way that uh, that i am uh, i I'm, I'm unprofessional i mean that um we formula one teams were probably even though they thought they were um you know very advanced um they were nowhere near as advanced as they were today so they were still more for people like me it was probably a little bit more fun for people like me um, to be able to, to to make a difference, you know, in teams of of fifty, sixty, a hundred, rather than teams of um, you know minimum of a thousand. Once you take the engine into account as well, so I, I think uh, possibly if if any era it could have been, um, you know, the the the, the late eighties um, when when we had those great battles, you know, nineteen eighty eight, um, and I guess I look back nostalgically on that as well because then I was a Formula One fan without working in Formula One. Um I was a schoolboy. So, you know, I'm always gonna look back on that era a little bit nostalgically. Um yeah, Fantastic. that's it. But okay. To be honest, yeah, one just 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 to just to finish, I mean honestly, I'm not a massive Formula One fan. So people ask me like a lot of Formula One questions and, and, and <laughs> Really? No, no, not really. <laughs> Well, that, that, that's, that's something we, we've all learned today. There you go. Yeah. Thank you very much for the uh, question, Bev, and thanks for joining us. We'll, no, we'll thank be, you. We'll be in touch. Uh, we'll, we'll move straight on to um, our next guest. Uh, Felicity has a question for you. Uh, let's just bring Felicity in. She'll be with us uh, any time now. Here's Felicity. Oh, we're a little bit sideways there, Felicity. Hello, Felicity. Can you hear us? Can you hear us? Can you hear us? 
Ah, connecting to audio. Here we go. Can you hear us? Yes, I can. Excellent. Uh, you're uh, a little bit sideways there for some reason. For listening. Yeah. To. Oh, okay. Well, look, you're live on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, uh, Rob's in the room here with us. You've got a question for Rob. Far away. What's your question for Rob, Felicity? Uh, yeah, my question is, which driver, um, past or present, do you think, you know, had the, pardon? they had they had the potential, but they were never given the chance. In a Let's just. I think I've got the question here. Felicity's asking, in your opinion, what's the best driver who never really got a chance to really prove themselves in a top team? Well, good question, Felicity. Uh, I think that I, I I don't think there's one driver. I think there's lots of drivers <laughs> who, who never yeah. really got got the chance. Um, but 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 it's a difficult one, you know, because, you, because can, we, can we push you to name any names? <laughs> well, uh, yeah, poss possibly. Um, yeah. I'm just kind of working it out in my head. Yeah. Um, I think that the, the the one the one that the one that immediately comes to mind is uh, Jules Bianchi. Um, you know, I think Jules Bianchi. Yeah. Um, you know, Charles has said it himself. Jules was 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 faster than than Charles. Um, so yes, please. Um, so I would I would say that that Jules never never really got the chance to to, to prove himself. Um, so Jules never really got the chance to, to to prove himself in a top team, and it was always a it was always a shame, you know. It was always going to be that he was probably going to be the um, he was getting ready for for that Ferrari crown, and he and he never did get it. Yeah. Um, I think I think on the whole, you know, I think when when you look at it, the the drivers who end up in top teams are the drivers who deserve to be in top teams. Right. So I'll answer your question, Felicity. Does. Thank yeah, you. Absolutely. Oh, excellent. Thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, we'll we'll pop you back in the waiting room. We'll catch up with you after the uh, after the uh, meeting. Uh, I've got a, a another question uh, on the line here from uh, James Garside. Let's just bring James in. He's got a question for you. Uh, James will be with us shortly. Hopefully, he connects to audio. Ah, there we are. James. Hello. Hello, James. Hello. Hello. Yes, you're live on YouTube and Facebook. Uh, you're here with Rob. You've got a question for Rob uh, far away. Yeah, hi, Rob. Thanks for talking. Um, there's been hi, a lot Rob. of chat about budget limits for uh, 2021 and the current financial situation of this year, uh, particularly with the lower teams needing to not only race next season, but develop a new car um, with smaller budgets than probably the cap has actually put in. So I was just wondering, do you think that this may widen the gap between the top three and the lower teams, um, which I know is something the new generation was trying to sort of solve? And I guess from that, how do you think that it will sort of introduce uh, a success to the new sort of style car? Thanks. Um, th thanks for the question, James. Um, I wonder. I I just missed some of the some of it, which is probably the crucial bit. So so it, it, the the connection is not great. So um, if you can be slightly more succinct in the question, I can give you a succinct answer. Okay. Um, so regarding, there seems to be a lot of debate around the the cap that's currently set for next year, and some of the lower teams with obviously. Um, the problems we faced this year, uh, the, the budgets are going to be a problem for 2021, developing um, a car for that season, as well as developing the 2022 new car. Um, do, do you, obviously the new car was there to try and bring the pack together, but do you think with, with obviously the problems we've had now that that gap might actually widen with the bigger teams being able to reach the cap and the lower teams not getting there to say um, up to the 140 million. Right. Okay. Um, no, I, I think I think what what we've done is we've worked with the teams um, in order to arrive at what is the best compromise um, from 2021 and, and 2022. 
So, so there has been an effective freeze of development in 2021, which where, where we want to cut um, as much of the budget from, from that area as possible so, so that we even up the playing field, which allows everybody to concentrate on their 2022 cars. So, so I think that the mitigations that, that we put in place with, with the virus and with the fact that um, you know, re revenue for the teams are, are not as uh, have not been as high um, as expected, then then you know mitigating with that for, for for less development for 2020 into 2021 um, and leaving just the budget cap for 21 going into 22. I think that um, we may have some cases where um, you know where where there's there, there's small discrepancies, but certainly what we've tried to put in place is to have. Um, you know, to, 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 to ensure that, that everybody goes into 22 um, with, a, with as even as play, playing field as possible. So, Alan, do you have a question? I'd, um, <laughs> uh, can I just sneak another one in for my six-year-old son? Uh, it's a bit simpler, but he'd just like to know, uh, Lego or Meccano? Meccano. Oh, there you go. Thank there you, you go. very much I'll for joining us, Meccano. James. Thank you very much. We'll be in touch. Thank you. <laughs> Lego or Meccano. That was a good one. Um, we, I did have another question from uh, Lee Knowles. Uh, she couldn't come on live in the end today. She had to, uh, she was traveling. But her, her question was, uh, when, you had a, 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 a re when you had to radio Felipe and utter the now infamous message, Fernando is faster than you, what was Felipe's actual response? As I'm sure it wasn't broadcast on F1. It was. was it, it certainly was broadcast on F1. It was complete silence. It, was... <laughs> it must be pretty awful to have to deliver team orders. Or did it, did it never really bother you? No, not really. It never really bothered me. The, 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 thing that, that is, the, the thing that is important for me is that we're all clear as to what the rules of engagement are um, pre-event. Yeah. You know? Um, and as long as we all have an ingoing battle plan that for certain scenarios we will favour this driver and for certain other scenarios we'll favour that driver, um, I've got no problem. You know, mm. I, I for you know throughout my Grand Prix career, apart from just latterly now, um, I've worked for teams, not for drivers, and, and the team has to come first in any in any motorsport environment. Yeah, yeah. The team has to come. First. Fantastic. Listen, Rob, I know you're a, um, you're you're a busy guy, and obviously you're. You're going to uh, you're going to Silverstone later today, so I won't I won't keep you too much longer. If we could just move it on to uh, we have a competition running. I've mentioned to you earlier we're giving away a hundred bottles of sparkling wine today. Um, so Rob, shortly Rob will ask you the viewers at home uh, a question, um, and the first one hundred people in the comments below with the correct answer will receive a bottle of sparkling white wine. So uh, over to you, Rob. You've got the question. Fire away. All right. So throughout my career, I have worked for four Formula One teams. Can you name two of them? So that's over Rob's career. He's worked for four Formula One teams. Can you name two of them? Good luck, everybody. So uh, I think we've got time. If we could just ask you a couple of more questions, Rob. So obviously it's, it's British Grand Prix day today. Um, what were your thoughts about yesterday's qualifying? Any, any surprises? Who impressed you? Um, Mercedes continue to impress me. Um, I think that yeah. they are, um, you know, without a doubt, the, the, the class of the field. Um, I continue to be, um, you know, impressed with what um, Racing Point have done um, and the resurgence there of that team. Um, I know there's a lot of disconsternation and, and a lot of, uh, um, you know, question marks, let's say. But, but you know, I think that the FIA have looked at this on, a new, on numerous occasions and they mm. found no wrongdoing. Yeah. So we just have to accept that. Um, the FIA and the stewards uh, are the ones that um, respectively write and then apply the rules. Mm. Um, so, 
you know, I think that that was really impressive. I was impressed, you know, with with the weekend that Nico Hulkenberg has had, you know, even to get into to Q2. I don't think people understand how difficult these cars are to drive and just to, to come from nowhere and jump in the car. That was that was quite incredible. Um, and then, you know, Williams getting into uh, Q2 as well with George Russell. I think that's really, really impressive um, from from where they were last year. You know, a little bit sloppy then with, with teamwork for the driver getting a five-place penalty. Um, but the driver himself and the car um, certainly seemed to be... Uh, you know, they, they, they've they got it going in the right direction. Mm. So we're just over two hours from the race. Um, it's something we don't really get to sort of fully understand as a, as a, as a viewer. What are, what are the processes that the teams are going through in preparation for the race at this point now? Well, at this point now, um, they'll be not too far away from, from final preparations. So, so the guys will be, I would say, in about, an hour's time. Right. Um, all the guys will be going to get suited up, um, yeah. get ready for, for the race. The, the race engineers will be going through, all the engineers will be going through the final checks. Um, you know, um, we'll be having final meetings about now, If especially if it was a wet weekend, if there was any inclement weather coming in, we'd be having our final DEFCON 5 meeting, as we used to call it. DEFCON um, <laughs> 5 meeting, uh, yeah. <laughs> for, any, for any disasters that might be coming in. Yeah. Final briefing with the drivers, you know, final checks, really, and, and just getting ready for, for, for the race. Marvellous. Last question, Rob, um, and, and then we'll, we'll, we'll let you go. I know you've got lots on, but um, you, ha- you had an amazing relationship with Felipe. Is there anyone on the grid in this current era of F1 that you think you would have enjoyed working with? Ah, oh, uh, what as, a, as as an engineer you mean? Yeah, so as an engineer for you know uh, a, a, anyone? Yes, as an engineer. I think that um, I, I would I would certainly have uh, relished working with uh, Lewis. You know, he is uh, the, the the finished article. Yeah, um, without a doubt, I would have uh, definitely liked. To work with, I like a uh, like a project. So you know, if you take two guys that are not quite the finished article, but are without a doubt incredibly um, talented, you know, Charles and Max, it would be yeah. good to, to, you know, definitely nice working with them. And then if you take younger guys who are much more of a project, um, like you know, incredibly talented guys, but but still um, have a long way to go. Whether they understand that or not, people like Lando, people like uh, George Russell. You know, it's, it's nice to work with guys like that as well and, and, and yeah. see their progress. Marvellous. Well, um, that just leaves me to say, Rob, thank you so much for uh, being with us today for our uh, first ever live Q&A. Uh, the strange times we're living in at the minute. So we really, really appreciate all of your help. So um, I'll, I'll let you get on with your day and uh, just say thank you very much, Rob, for joining us. And um, we'll, we'll speak to you soon. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Speak to you soon. Bye-bye. Thanks for having me. Bye-bye. Well, there we go. Uh, Rob Smedley, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, that just leaves me to say thank you so much to uh, our charities today, Sands and uh, Reedley. Don't forget, uh, you'll find our links to the Just Giving page where you can make your donations. And if you can, please, please do. Uh, thanks also to the Bluebell Vineyard Estate with their award-winning range of Hind Leap sparkling wines, uh, which, of course, today you can win. So make sure, if you know the answer to that question, pop it in the comments below. As I say, the first 100 people will receive a bottle of Hind Leap sparkling wine made right here in the UK. And, and lastly, thanks uh, to all of you uh, watching. Thank you for the support. We really, really appreciate it. Um, It's certainly been a lot of fun putting this together for you guys. So we hope you've enjoyed it and uh, have found it informative. Uh, Thanks again to everyone. Uh, Thank you very much and goodbye. Have a good day and enjoy the Grand Prix.
Legend has it, this is where giants come to seal the deal. Here I am, they roar. But theirs are not the only roars here. In this place where carbon fiber beasts rip round you at 300 kilometers an hour, where the tension before lights out makes the hardened flutter and the mighty gasp, this is where a handshake can warp the course of history, where what's written on a napkin can send shockwaves. Below is where the F1 elite soldier from truck to track. Into battle they go, into battle you go. A place where you'll be at the beating heart of it all. Where time is on your side. And the sun sets three times. One, two, three. This is Paddock Club. Isn't it time you wrote your legend? <laughs>